What we have in mind is breakfast in bed for 400,000. Over four days, the focus of the Woodstock crowd was on this main stage. But behind the scenes, something else was happening. Food had run out. It was raining. Still, a community was developing, as these pictures from the Bethel Woods Museum show. Zeke Boyle was a teenager alienated from an older generation. At Woodstock, if, if you were wet and cold, the person next to you would offer you, you know, their extra shirt or their food. People were sharing everything. There were other problems, young people overdosing on drugs. I ended up uh, drinking a lot and I ended up uh, taking some LSD and I didn't have that peace love experience that a lot of other people had. Still, just being part of the Woodstock community changed Joe DePayne. Looking back at it now in retrospect 40 years later, it really was good for me. What it did is it made me aware that there was a whole other lifestyle going on out there yeah. and another different consciousness is going on. Duke Devlin came for the music and fun. You had the war in Vietnam, you had civil rights, you had women's rights, gay rights, all these different things. And you had and you, and you had the music, which was a form of communication which we used strongly back then. Freedom, freedom. The music touched a powerful chord, says American musician Richie Havens. If I could tell you how many people hugged me <laughs> from the time I started, it's amazing. I, I, I don't even believe it myself, you know, but it's, it's thousands, thousands. And after Woodstock, many, like Zeke Boyle and Joe DePayne, went on to protest the war. It just gave a credence to the whole movement and my part in the movement. It empowered me. It made me feel like uh, my voice had some meaning. Today, this site is run by the Bethel Woods Center for the Arts. Inside, there are replicas of the hippie cars and the buses that brought people to the site. People who were at Woodstock come here to tour and reminisce. It made me realize that I could make a change in the world, that I didn't have to just sit by and watch. In fact, says Michael Lang, the promoter of Woodstock, the man on the right, change is the legacy of Woodstock. What's important to remember is that there is a possibility for things to be better that people can make a difference. That if you get involved, you know, and you make a commitment to something, you can be a part of a change that's positive for everybody. The site today is a shrine. Ralph Corwin, a boy who spent just one day here, still comes back often to clear his mind. I come here for peace of mind, if nothing else. And I'm going to be here forever because my ashes are going to be scattered out there. Maybe in a hundred years, they'll still be celebrating and somebody will walk by, roll me up and smoke me. <laughs> peace. Local people also feel the site is special. Years ago, they placed this monument on the small hill above the site. So no one will forget. Martin Phillips, VOA News, New York. Over four days, the focus of the Woodstock crowd was on this main stage. Over four days, the focus of the Woodstock crowd was on this main stage. But behind the scenes, something else was happening. But behind the scenes, something else was happening. Food had run out. It was raining. Food had run out. It was raining. Still, a community was developing. Still, a community was developing, as these pictures from the Bethel Woods Museum show. As these pictures from the Bethel Woods Museum show. Zeke Boyle was a teenager alienated from an older generation. Zeke Boyle was a teenager alienated from an older generation. At Woodstock, if, if you were wet and cold, the person next to you would offer you. At Woodstock, if, if you were wet and cold, the person next to you would offer you, you know, their extra shirt or their food. People were sharing everything you know their extra shirt or their food people were sharing everything there were other problems young people overdosing on drugs Thanks. there were other problems young people overdosing on drugs i ended up uh, drinking a lot and i ended up uh, taking some lsd i ended up uh, drinking a lot and i ended up uh, 
taking some LSD and I didn't have that peace love experience that a lot of other people had. And I didn't have that peace love experience that a lot of other people had. Still, just being part of the Woodstock community changed Joe DePayne. Still, just being part of the Woodstock community changed Joe DePayne. Looking back at it now, in retrospect, 40 years later, it really was good for me. Looking back at it now, in retrospect, 40 years later, it really was good for me. W what it did is it made me aware that there was a whole other lifestyle going on out there. W what it did is it made me aware that there was a whole other lifestyle going on out there, yeah. and another different consciousness is going on there, yeah. and another different consciousness is going on. Duke Devlin came for the music and fun. Duke Devlin came for the music and fun. He had the war in Vietnam, he had civil rights, and women's rights, gay rights. He had the war in Vietnam, he had civil rights, and women's rights, gay rights, all these different things, gay rights, all these different things. And you had, and, you, and he had the music, which was a form of communication, which we used strongly back then. And you had, and, you, and he had the music, which was a form of communication, which we used strongly back then. The music touched a powerful chord, says American musician Richie Havens. The music touched a powerful chord, says American musician Richie Havens. If I could tell you how many people hugged me, <laughs> if I could tell you how many people hugged me <laughs> from the time I started, <laughs> from the time I started, it's amazing. I, I, I don't even believe it myself, you know, but it, it's amazing. I, I, I don't even believe it myself, you know, but it's, it's thousands, thousands, it's thousands, thousands. And after Woodstock, many, like Zeke Boyle and Joe DePayne, went on to protest the war. And after Woodstock, many, like Zeke Boyle and Joe DePayne, went on to protest the war. It just gave a credence to the whole movement and my part in the movement. It empowered me. It just gave a credence to the whole movement and my part in the movement. It empowered me. It made me feel like um, my voice had some meaning. It made me feel like um, my voice had some meaning. Today, this site is run by the Bethel Woods Center for the Arts. Today, this site is run by the Bethel Woods Center for the Arts. Inside, there are replicas of the hippie cars and the buses that brought people to the site. Inside, there are replicas of the hippie cars and the buses that brought people to the site. People who were at Woodstock come here to tour and reminisce. People who were at Woodstock come here to tour and reminisce. It made me realize that I could make a change in the world. It made me realize that I could make a change in the world. That I didn't have to just sit by and watch. That I didn't have to just sit by and watch. In fact, says Michael Lang, the promoter of Woodstock, the man on the right. In fact, says Michael Lang, the promoter of Woodstock, the man on the right. Change is the legacy of Woodstock. Right. Change is the legacy of Woodstock. What's important to remember is that there, what's important to remember is that there is possibility for things to be better. There is possibility for things to be better. That people can make a difference. That people can make a difference. That if you get involved, you know, that if you get involved, you know, and you make a commitment to something, and you make a commitment to something, you can be a part of a change that's positive for everybody you can be a part of a change that's positive for everybody. The site today is a shrine. The site today is a shrine. Ralph Corwin, a boy who spent just one day here, still comes back often to clear his mind. Ralph Corwin, a boy who spent just one day here, still comes back often to clear his mind. I come here for peace of mind, if nothing else. I come here for peace of mind, if nothing else. And I'm going to be here forever because my ashes are going to be scattered out there. And I'm going to be here forever because my ashes are going to be scattered out there. Maybe in a hundred years, maybe in a hundred years, they'll still be celebrating. They'll still be celebrating, and somebody will walk by, roll me up, and smoke me. And somebody will walk by, roll me up, and smoke me. <laughs> peace. Peace. Local people also feel the site is special. Local people also feel the site is special. Years ago, they placed this monument on the small hill above the site, so no one will forget. Years ago, they placed this monument on the small hill above the site, so no one will forget. Martin Phillips, VOA News, New York.